uh, hello friends and welcome to the second lecture of module 6 that is flood routing so in this lecture we will understand the concept of flood routing then we will describe the hydrologic channel routing method and its procedure and will apply the musking method for flood routing so let us understand what is flood routing now uh, from the concept of uh, gradually varied uh, uniform flow that is mostly applied to flood waves so the flood wave can be treated as a uniformly progressive wave so that the wave front that travels along the time uh, without changing its shape now if the channel is irregular and resistance is very high then the wave configuration will be modified as it moves down the reach so the determination of the modification in this flood flow is known as flood routing so how that flood wave mod modifies as it moves from upstream to downstream in a river that is called flood routing alternatively it is also recognized as a procedure uh, required to determine the hydrograph at one point on a stream from a known hydro from a hydro known hydrograph at an upstream point so you have the information of the upstream point and then you can easily determine the uh, hydrograph at the downstream point so there are two uh, kinds of uh, routing uh, that is the first is a hydrologic flood routing second is a hydraulic flood routing so the hydro hydrologic flood routing it uses the continuity equation to relate the inflows outflows and storage so that we can get the outflows while the hydraulic routing uses the continuity as well as momentum equation they are called the seine venin equations hydrologic routing is much simpler and more empirical while hydraulic routing is more complex because it requires the information of channel geometry at each and every cross section hydrologic uh, routing cannot model the backwater effect and surges while hydraulic modeling uh, routing uh, allows uh, the modeling of backwater effect and surges so today we will be dealing with only hydrologic routing and there are again two categories in hydrologic routing that is a reservoir and channel routing but since we are studying the open channel flows our focus is only on channel routing so we have a muskingum method which is a very popular method used for hydrologic channel routing so uh, here we'll analyze the flood flow in a river so during a flood the water surface is not parallel to the channel bottom but it varies with a uh, time as well so the total uh, water storage is divided into two parts so if you look at this figure so during a flood wave we de determine the water storage in two parts so this one this is the constant part which is shown by the uh, dashed line so this is called the prism storage and whatever the variable part this one this is called the wedge storage so if we look at the cross section so this is a line which is constant that is a prism storage and this is a variable flood wave so when it crosses the prism storage this side is a negative and this side is a positive so that way for different waveforms you can determine the prism and wedge storage and thus you can model the inflow and outflow as well as considering the storage. So three parameters are there while well, you consider the Muskingum method. So the total um, volume of water stored in the channel that is considered to be a comprising of two parts is prism and wedge storage. So prism storage is one. If the volume that would exist if uniform flow occurred at a downstream depth, that is a volume of a volume formed by an imaginary plane parallel to the channel bottom. So that is uh, what happens in case of a prism storage and uh, in case of a wedge storage, a wedge like storage that is being formed uh, between the actual water surface and the top of the prism storage. So that is an imaginary one that is a prism storage and between that you have a wedge storage. So if uh, we have a fixed depth in the downstream, the prism storage remains constant while the wedge storage changes from a positive value under an advancing wave and negative value under a receding wave. So it depends upon the waveform. So prism storage is constant and it depends essentially only on the downstream section of the river. So the prism storage SP is a function of outflow discharge only. While the wedge storage, since it is a, uh, depending upon the waveform variations, it is a function of both inflow as well as outflow discharges so we have two types of storage and once we combine them we get the total storage so the total storage can be expressed as uh, s is equal to sp plus sw 
where uh, sp where the equation is further modified as k into x i raised to m plus 1 minus x into q raised to m now m is an exponent uh, which is used uh, which is considered as 0.6 for a rectangular channel and 1 for a natural channel now k and x are two very important parameters where k is a storage time constant it physically signifies the time of travel of a flood wave in a reach that is represented in hours and x is a weighing factor which weighs the inflow and outflow so if x is equal to uh, it can vary from 0 to 0 0.5 so there are two uh, that that range is possible for x so if we further look that how that equation looks so if we modify the equation one uh, for a natural channel your m is one and uh, it re thus reduces to a linear relationship otherwise it was a non-linear when it has a function m exponent m so s is equal to k into xi plus 1 minus x into q and this equation is called the muskingum equation in this equation if i take the value of x as 0 so this term gets cancelled out and this becomes 0 0.5 so your there is no uh, wedge storage and the storage is similar to that of a reservoir now if you take x equal to 0 0.5 so it uh, the outflow and inflow are both are equal so this is 0 0.5 this is 1 minus 0 0.5 again 0 0.5 so inflow and outflow both are equally important in determining the channel story so that is the important of, importance of the weighing factor x for natural streams we generally take uh, x between 0 to 0 0.3 and you can assume a mean value of 0 0.2 as well so uh, if we apply this uh, routing equation then what uh, data and all we require so to apply the routing equation we require the outflow hydrograph that is q is a function of time inflow hydrograph is a function of time again and the characteristics of channel reach that was is a k and x value and you require an initial condition that what is the outflow discharge at time t equal to zero so if we consider a time interval delta t and we uh, use the muskingum equation uh, the change in storage that is delta s is represented as s2 minus s1 is equal to k into x this is a change in inflow i2 minus i1 plus 1 minus x in change in discharge q2 minus q1 so simplifying this equation we have i1 plus i2 by 2 into delta t and minus q1 uh, so, so, sorry this is the continuity equation then we'll uh, use that and we have uh, q1 minus q2 by 2 delta t so when we apply the continuity equation for the reach we get this form and then we combine both the equations 3 and 4 and then we solve it uh, subsequently so we get an equation that is q2 is equal to c0 i2 plus c1 i1 plus c2 q1 so this c1 and c2 c0 c1 c2 are the constants uh, and they can be determined using this empirical equation so in all these three equation the denominators are same and the numerators only vary so these numerators will vary essentially and the summation of c0 c1 and c2 this will always be one so to predict the outflow discharge at time uh, two you require the inflow at time two inflow at time one inflow is already known to you and the discharge at previous time step that way you can uh, predict the outflow or route the outflow now if for best results your routing interval delta t should be such that its value should lie between k and 2kx that interval you should select so suppose your k is equal to 10 and 2kx equal to 4 so delta t should be between them so 6 or something depending upon the interval okay so let us understand the procedure how to uh, move ahead and then we'll have the application of the same in the procedure we can have that inflow hydrograph needs to be routed so value of k and x should be known the value of outflow discharge at the start of routing operation is also collected uh, so we select an appropriate value of delta t and which is based on the constraint uh, as uh, indicated here then you compute the coefficient c0 c1 and c2 then you have the initial conditions i1 q1 and i2 is known and then at the end of first time step using equation 5 you will compute q2 now once this is calculated then you go on to next step so this q2 becomes q1 for the next step that is uh, delta t plus 1 whatever you call that step and you will sequentially go till the procedure is repeated for the entire inflow hydrograph and that way you will solve it 
So let us apply this uh, Muskingum equation uh, for flood routing. So what? let us understand what is given to you. So you are given I, you are given K, you are given X. Okay. So if we uh, compute, we are, now you want to find delta T. So delta T, so it should be K delta T greater than 2KX. So this has to be the formula. So what is K? K is 22 and 2KX. So that 2KX will be 11. So your answer should be Sorry, 2kx will not be, yeah, it will be 11. And your delta t has to be between these. Now you can see this is the, this in blue is already given to you. That is the inflow hydrograph. So these two values are given to you. That is the time and inflow. So you can see the interval is 12. So if that interval suits, then you can take delta t as 12. Otherwise, if not, then you have to interpolate between these two intervals if delta t was any value less than 12 or greater than 12 for say, but less than 12 is more uh, imperative. So thus you get the value of delta T as 12. So that is the first thing to do. What your inflow hydrograph is given, K and X were given an initial condition Q equal to 40. So this initial condition is also given to you. Then you compute the values of C0, C1 and C2 using that equations and these all sum up to one. So this all will be one. So let us prepare a table where you have time inflow hydrograph then we'll put the components of Muskingum equation. So to get Q2, you need to have C0 I2 plus C1 I1 plus C2 Q1. So this is uh, some change. So I'm, this has to be C2 Q1. Okay. So this is all required for your uh, Muskingum equation and you can get Q. Now, whenever we are, uh, let us say we are do, doing for this time step. So first time step, there is no calculation. You come to this time step. So this is first then you, you have been given inflow, you have been in outflow. You're coming to this time step. So for this time step, this is your I1, this is your I2 and this is your Q1. So you have C, C0, your coefficient is already given as 0 0.022 into I2 multiplied by 64. Then you have C1 into I1, you multiply by 0 0.5 into 40. 0.5111 and C2Q1, so 0.467 into 40. So this way you will get the value. Now, let us say you move on to another step. You move on to this step. So for this step, this becomes your I1, this becomes your I2 and the previous value becomes your Q1. And how to determine this Q2? So Q2 will be in, in this case, it will be the summation of all these three. So just you sum it, this will be your Q2. Similarly, in the previous case, the summation of all these three will give you Q2. So now we move on to the next step. Let us uh, go here. So this step, so for this step, this becomes your I1, this becomes your I2, and the previous value becomes your Q1. Just simply add and you get the Q2. Similarly, perform this uh, routing procedure till the end of the hydrograph, that is 144 hours, and you get the outflow hydrograph coordinates as well. Now, what is the purpose of routing is to determine how much flood have be, has been routed, sorry, till 156. So if we plot the inflow and outflow hydrograph, so you can see uh, that, uh, this one is the inflow hydrograph and this one is the outflow hydrograph. So I'm plotting. So here I get the peak of inflow hydrograph at time somewhere here around 36. So that is also again evident from the table. So where you can see uh, the peak was around 250 at time 36 and for Q the peak was around 214 at time 60. Uh, so when we are plotting it, uh, here you get that uh, peak at time 60 that is 214. So the difference between the peak of inflow and outflow hydrograph that is called attenuation. So you just subtract both the peaks and you get the difference between peaks of inflow and outflow hydrograph and that is called attenuation.
and the time difference between the peak of inflow and outflow hydrograph. So this is at 36, this is at 60, so that is 24 hours, and that is called peak lag. So peak lag is a time difference between the peaks of inflow and outflow hydrograph, and that is the end product which you have to derive. So you can derive it graphically also, and if not, then you can derive from tabular manner also. So this way, the flood routing aims to distribute your flood volume such that the peak is lowered or attenuated and the time is delayed. So this 24 hours is a time which the authorities can get to carry out rescue operations and thereby by attenuating the peak, you are lowering the damage also and thus you are making... Um, uh, trying to you know uh, mitigate the impact of a flood so that is why flood routing is very important so this was all about flood routing and that's all for this and thank you very much for your patience learning